Hello and welcome to a different video to the ones I normally do. I normally, being a philosopher and a teacher, I normally talk about things that are pretty geeky and uh, to do with philosophy, obviously. But today I'm going to talk to you about my diagnosis for multiple sclerosis, which happened over the summer. I thought it might be interesting for anyone going through the same sort of thing. Um, lots of people do these sort of videos for you know, multiple sclerosis awareness days and whatnot. So I thought I'd talk you through uh, what the, the process and the experiences for me were, uh, just in case it helps. So I suppose over the last three years, when I look back in hindsight, there have been things that I can piece together that uh, have pointed towards me getting a diagnosis of multiple sclerosis or having the condition. So it started, I think, probably about three years ago when I stopped being able to feel sort of the ends of my fingers. And this is a pretty common uh, first symptom in, in MS. And at the time I was playing squash and obviously doing everything you normally do in a day. And that was like, oh, that's a bit interesting. And gripping a squash racket was um, a bit funky. Uh, but uh, I just put it down to, to something like a trap nerve in the back. So I was eventually, you know, as it got a bit progressively worse, but not, not, not too bad, I went to the doctor and said, look, I can't feel my fingers. And I was sent off for, uh, they basically sent some electric shocks up my arm to see if the nerves are working there. The nerves are working fine. Uh, then I went to a physio for some time and for the best part of the year physio was doing things I said you know I'd previously had a really bad trap nerve in my back I think my posture is terrible from sitting at a laptop uh, and doing so much writing for 10 years and and they pretty much she she agreed um, and gave me some exercises to do but nothing really seemed to work and then um, alongside of that, I had a couple of other symptoms that were sort of popping up here and there. And I'd go to the doctor. So, for example, um, more recently, I had a real urge to to urinate. You know, when, when I needed to go to to the loo, I really, really needed to go. And so I went to the doctor, and then they tested my prostate, and then put me on a drug to reduce the size of the prostate. But in hindsight, of course, that's connected to MS, a real urgency to to do that. So um, a, a bunch of different things were, were happening. Um, one thing that, that got progressively worse, and that was interesting in playing. So I was playing touch rugby over the pre, so that would be two summers ago. So it's the end, it's autumn now, autumn 2018. So, um, so a couple of summers back, I was playing touch rugby and I just felt like my coordination wasn't 100%. And when I was playing squash, so I play squash sort of once a week, once every couple of weeks. And I was finding that progressively, you know, I was just a bit, just not really as good as I should have been. Maybe as an excuse for losing. Um, but, uh, but that was a bit frustrating and I, I found I was getting dizzy quite easily. And I also manage or did manage, I'm sort of stepping back now, but I manage a, my boys, I have twin boys who are presently eight years old and I manage their football team. And they, so just doing training with them and, and with some of the other adults there kicking football around, I was like, oh, my coordination is rubbish. You know, I'm not, I'm, I'm not very good at football anymore. Not that I was particularly ever any good anyway. But, um, but, and that was, that was pretty challenging for me. And I was starting to piece things together. And a couple of years previously, I'd, I'd sort of had a laugh with my partner about my squash. And she said, you know, maybe you've got MS as a kind of half joke. And that had stuck in my mind. And then, and then when I started piecing these things together, um, it, it all sort of, the, the narrative sort of started making a bit of sense. So uh, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a teacher at primary school. I'm in, in charge of English and I write books. I have a publishing company on the side, manage a football team, help to coach a rugby team um, and do all these things on the side. So my my life is really, really busy and very, very stressful. However, it's not a kind of stress that I, that, that I get down with. 
you know, it's it's not it's not a negative thing like, oh, I'm so stressed, oh, it's terrible. Like, I suppose I sort of thrive on that. So although my life is, is jam-packed full of stuff and, and, you know, some of my colleagues at school is like, I can't believe how much stuff you do. It's just insane. But that's not something that, that I've ever found to be a problem. It's kind of how I operate. But I think I wonder whether that, all that stuff going on in my life and in the background has just, just lifted my stress levels um, underneath the bonnet so that so that that may have been a, a trigger towards or almost certainly was a trigger towards my sort of condition so anyway you know just um going through these symptoms you know getting getting little little issues here and there and the the, the you know would be another issue that adds to the list and you start trying to join the dots um so then it was last year I, I moved to a new school I was in charge of English it, it was a very stressful environment as far as results and um, the workload at the school because of the position it was in and and it was a great year it had a really good year it, 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 that year as I do every year and towards the end of the year however so the summer term I was really really fatigued I like properly fatigued so I was useless at home I was no help I was um, sort of bringing my books home to mark and they were taking even longer to mark and you know I'd as per normal be working till I'd, I'd go to sleep but just not very efficiently and not very effectively um, and just couldn't bring myself to be particularly energetic uh, and even at school I was I was you know not that people would have particularly noticed but I was just I was just off the money really um you know not on point on on you know the the, the way I was working uh, as far as my I suppose high expectations were concerned so that 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 really made me sort of aware that something else was going on and and putting that together with all these other symptoms particularly you know my lack of coordination you know when you when you're sort of tripping over a lot or walking into walls or you know I particularly found that and I, and I find now that when I'm walking down the road if I'm walking a straight line with my head held up that's fine but as soon as I if I get my phone out to look at my phone or if I've got a bag and I'm looking in my bag I'm weaving around all over the shop so um so things like that I thought right I've, I've got to go to the doctor and sort this out so I went to my GP got an appointment and said look I've got these eight things that that that's that are going on um, and I think these are all explained by MS I've been to you a bunch of times about individual ones of these and you said well that's that this is this this is that but actually if one thing explains them all then you know in philosophy we call this Occam's razor so if you've got one you know satisfactory explanation for them all and you're not multiplying all your explanations by saying well this this explains that that explains that that this different thing explains that one thing explains it all it's really simple it's more likely to be that so I said that and she said yep yeah, it, it looks like MS will refer you and this is back I, I suppose in June and then to get so I then went home and you do referrals online so I went online and they said right we can get you a neurologist appointment till uh, we can't get you one so the internet told me until uh, until November. I was like, man, that's that's a bunch of months away. I'm not I'm not happy with that. Oh well, uh, we'll just see how it goes. Um, and then, so so what was happening over time? I suppose over several years, I was deteriorating ever so slightly. And then we had a heat wave this summer, so we had six weeks of crazy heat, and I and that coincided with me going right downhill. And again, in hindsight, I can put my, you know, deterioration possibly largely down to that heat wave because MS isn't very good in the heat, you know. Um, uh, and as I went down like that, I was like, I've got to do something more, more quickly than go to see the NHS neurologist in, I don't know, six months time or whatever. So um, with the kindness of my parents, they gave me the money to see a, a private consultant which again just feeds into this kind of like elitist access to healthcare that even in, with the NHS and in Britain, it's, it's just it's just not fair, is it? 
but anyway so I, I did what I felt I had to do which is book a um, book a private cons consultation which I did and I, I went to a hospital in Southampton and saw a private neurologist who said who gave me the physical examination sort of um, reflexes this and that get me to do toe to heel walking uh, which is probably my most shaky part of that but everything else I, I did fine and he said don't worry it's just stress you're just stressed and he said you know I'm only wrong once every three years two to three years straight away I was thinking man I don't think this is stress the stress could explain five of the things I've got but eight of you know three of them like walking into walking into doors and not being able to feel my fingers and you know and having legs so every so often when I wake up in in the morning I get spasms in my left leg where my leg would just go wah, 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 wah. Uh, and and I was like that that's not stress right so I wasn't happy with that and he said well look you've done fine in your physical examination I think it's just stress my partner who wanted it to be just stress rather than something like MS was like yeah I told you it's stress which is absolutely fine I totally understand why you know I would prefer would have preferred it to have been stress obviously as well so he said look for peace of mind you can have an MRI scan but obviously you're going to have to pay for that and that will um that will tell you much more conclusively he said there's a non-zero chance as MS but basically it's not MS so anyway, I went camping for a week with some friends. It's the summer holidays now, and and was pretty similar in my physical, you know, capabilities and whatnot. Um, and then at the end of the week, on the last day, I stopped being able to feel my stomach and my intestines behind him. So that was really weird. Uh, that literally, the, the morning I woke up, we were putting the tents away, and I said to Helen, my partner, I said, "This is weird. I can't feel my stomach. Like I can't feel my skin. It feels like a brick wall." And you know when you breathe in, even if you've got a bit of bit of flab to cover it, as I as I as I certainly did, you know, you can you can breathe in so you can see your ribs, or you can breathe in and roll your tummy. I just couldn't do that. It's like a brick wall going down. And I was like, this is weird. I'm going to I'm going to get, uh, ask if my parents had some money I can put towards going to see going to get an MRI. So I. I phoned up the hospital and got an MRI scan like the next day on a Sunday, right? So I went in, had an MRI scan, um, and then a week later got a letter from the neurologist saying, yeah, yeah, you got MS. Or he said, you've highly likely got MS, which is, you know, doctor speak for, don't want to be sued just in case you don't, but basically you have. So I was like, instead of being, oh, woe is me, I was like, yes, this is, I knew I had it. Right, I felt inside. I had all these symptoms, and actually, this is a real weight off my shoulder because now I have certainty. You know, humans aren't very good with uncertainty, so psychologically speaking. So now I was like, right, I know what I've got. Now I can start dealing with it. Now I can start putting things in place, uh, rather than before. I was just in some kind of weird limbo. So the situation was, I'd got this letter of of diagnosis, and this is broadly where I'm at at the moment, which is in between. The, the private system, the NHS system, because I was like, right, I want to hop back on the NHS because obviously this is going to cost me an arm and a leg and I can't afford that. So thank you very much to my parents who have enabled me to at least get this diagnosis six months before I would have would have had that. Now now I've got a six month sort of head start, I suppose, but I want to hop back on the NHS. So now I'm still got my, so we're in, we're in October now and I still have my, actually now it's end of October, um, referral to an NHS neurologist in Winchester so that's that's cool uh, I went back to the GP to say I've got this letter um, can you expedite my my um, meeting with the neurologist consultation and they sent a letter off but nothing I've heard nothing so um, and I know neurologists are hard to come by and are very overworked but yeah, it's just a, a little bit annoying because I don't have an MS nurse. So in with multiple sclerosis, the MS nurse is the person who coordinates your treatment w with your neurologist, with, with your sort of treatment pathways and whatnot. So I don't have that. Weirdly, so I was seeing, as I said earlier, I was seeing a physio and I said, this is before my diagnosis and everything, I said, I think I've got MS and this explains this, this and this. 
including my fingers. And she said, do you want to see the neurophysio around the corner in the same department? I said, yeah, that's brilliant. So she referred me internally to a neurophysio who I've been seeing, who's done benchmark tests on my legs to say, oh, your sensation on your legs is not very good. Your muscle on your legs is weak and needs sorting out. So I'm getting treatment there. I don't have an MS nurse. I went back to the GP and said, right, I've got this letter from, 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 you know, private consultant. I want to expedite my referral if possible, but in the meantime, what can you do? She was a locum, so she was on holiday from working abroad somewhere. I don't know where she was working abroad, but she was back and she said, look, where I'm a doctor, you know, she was an expat come come back for holiday where I'm a doctor where I work we don't really have neurologists so doctors just prescribe um, steroids do you fancy doing some steroids so I went well yeah why not <laughs> sounds great so she whacked me on a bunch of steroids um, uh, presidnolone I think or something like that um, wh which I'm taking every day and and they seem to be doing an absolutely fabulous job of, of combating I think probably my fatigue most of all so um so i have all these kind of bits and pieces of of treatment um but no official kind of ms nurse coordinated treatment and and i'm waiting to jump back on that nhs um pathway so that's kind of where i'm at at the moment in terms of of diagnosis now i was at at, at the end of the summer or halfway at the beginning of summer holidays as a teacher and sort of halfway through I was in a bad way like physically and cognitively so I was also uh, what I didn't mention as some of my symptoms were um, being unable to find certain words that I needed short-term memory loss and focus loss and I as I said I'm a philosopher I do a lot of arguing online I write books and I do public talks and my mind is super important Right, it's way more important than my body. Um, it's who I am. I mean, most people probably think this to some degree or another, but it's kind of who I am, and I use my mind all day, every day, both in my teaching, but in in my incessant arguing with people. So, to lose parts of my cognitive faculties were were an, you know is a worry, was a worry, and annoying. But psychologically speaking, I wasn't like as I said, woe is me, because. I knew or I thought I had MS and so I, I, you know, and I'm pretty pragmatic so I don't let things like that get me down. So psychologically on that level I've been absolutely fine but cognitively I was struggling and physically I was struggling. So this is in, in the summer and then I got the diagnosis and said right, okay I've got this diagnosis, what do I do, what can I control? My sister went to a school reunion, one of her friends has had MS since she's 15. She's on this program called Overcoming MS, which is put together by a, a doctor who got MS, who assimilated all the research on MS that he could to find out the best things to do. That really floats my boat because I'm a big fan of science and evidence-based policy making. So I like stuff that, that has loads of evidence behind it and say, right, here's the evidence to support this, this treatment. Do this treatment and you're more likely to to come off better so I was like okay that sounds fab I got the book which in Britain you can get for free if you sign up to their website so I did the I got the overcoming MS book and basically what that said is um, diet change your diet get sunlight take supplements de-stress you can do that through meditation uh, exercise and uh, take medications obviously and um, change your life for life. It's not just a fad. You know, you're, you're going to you're going to be changing the way you eat and the way you operate for the rest of your life. End of. And try and protect your your family as well because there's a genetic um, element to this. So you know, your children get them doing some of those same things as well. So I was like, right, that's brilliant. I can do all these things. That apart from the the disease modifying medications. So, but luckily I was put on steroids. So that's a start. So what happened at the beginning of the summer or midway through summer is I then changed loads of things in my life. So I became a basically a vegan or piscatarian, so I eat fish. Um, and that's because of the saturated fat that, that's in all, the, all these things. So it's really my diet has changed massively in cutting down saturated fats. 
that's cool. Supplements, so I take omega threes, vitamin Ds. So sunlight, sunlight is. So it turns out, as many people with MS will know, that the further away you are from the equator, so the less sunlight you have, the more likely you are to get MS. So sunlight is a key factor, um, and also the more westernized your country is, the more likely you have, the more likely you are to have MS. So diet and stress are really important. So changing my diet taking supplements um, uh, I cut out dairy so what was interesting in in the book is it is it, said quite honestly we, we're not 100% sure about this but it looks like there's a correlation between uh, people who have dairy and incidences of MS and it looks like the, the milk protein is really similar similar to the protein of your mind and sheath so MS is about attacking your the the, the sheath around your nerves so autoimmune disease your body's attacking itself it's attacking the the covering to your nerves so your nerve you know the, those messages you're sending around your body through your nerves are being interrupted or not not very good um and then when you have milk it's the same protein and your body starts attacking the milk this is how i understand it your body starts attacking the milk protein and then attacking its own myelin sheath so it kind of triggers off those incidences and relapses potentially so they said the, the jury's out whether it's 100 percent true you know, the case that 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 is so but it, it looks it looks fairly likely so and and for me i was like well I might as well cut out milk i mean i love milk and i love cheese and i love dairy but it's so easy to cut those things out now because the shop sells so much of this stuff. And actually, when you put your mind to it, it's not really a big thing. It's just not a big thing. You know, who cares? So, so I've cut out all of those things. Now, I have got hugely better from those days of the summer holidays. So cognitively and physically, I have where I was going down slowly over sort of three years and then went down over the summer with the heat wave. I've gone back up to here, right? Gone back up. So I'm physically and mentally a lot better. The problem is I've changed so many variables. I'm not sure what, what it is that's affected my sort of remission. Um, I, my guess is probably everything <laughs> to some degree. So my diet has definitely made me feel better just in, in my body, just from a health perspective. I feel better. I've lost loads of weight. Um, uh, that's really good. Uh, my steroids, I'm sure, because there's a couple of days I've forgotten to take them, and the next day I've been like, whoa, you know, a bit like all over the shop. So I think the steroids do, definitely do a good job. I, I often feel my heart rate's quite high, and I struggle to get to sleep late at night. When I have my full bunch of steroids, I'm like, oh, I can do some work on a laptop while, while my partner's sort of fast asleep. Whereas before, when I was in that fatigue zone, I was out cold by sort of, you know, 11, which for me is really, really early, um, 10, 30, 11. So, so steroids are definitely working and, and, um, and all the supplements I'm sure are working. So, uh, and I'm, and I'm doing things like swimming. So with the heat, heat is, is bad for MS. And that's a real problem when you need to do exercise because obviously you're heating your body up. So what's the best thing to do? Exercise wise, well, probably something that you can do that keeps your body cool. So swimming is something I've taken up um, uh, again more more seriously and try to go swimming. I, I do at least twice a week. Try to go three times a week. Um, so that that's that's all probably helping. Uh, I can't tell what is having an effect on what in, in a specific manner, but changing all those things has not been a problem. It's not really got in the way of my life um and 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 i'm sure they are responsible cumulatively for making me feel better so that's cool my work have been so supportive so they uh they're they're a uh, state-run school and they said to me look we really want to keep you at school 100 percent. we'll do anything to keep you so we uh, we'll do a risk assessment, we'll change what needs to be changed, you know, if you need to go to the loo really quickly, that's not a problem, we got to, you can get someone in into the classroom, you know, that, that's it. That, that sort of stuff is really easy, but then it's like if you're feeling really tired, you can take time out or you can, you can, you know, we'll, we'll manage, manage you, we'll, we'll get you, you know, uh, a comfortable chair type thing, you know, instead of a little 
plastic kids chair and all these kind of you know we'll change this and do that and basically the, but the problem is because ms is so variable and you don't know how you're going to feel you can't predict how you're going to feel down the line and it affects people in so many different ways i can't i i it was frustrating because i couldn't go to the school and say i will feel like this and therefore you know i will need this kind of change to my working environment or my my work patterns or whatever it's it's kind of like i don't know how i'm going to feel can we react to it as I feel it? And because they're so supportive, then then that is fine. So I'm, I'm really grateful to them and you know all my colleagues for being for being generally quite wonderful. Um, w for example, I go swimming on a on a Wednesday lunchtime, um, and if I'm you know a little bit late back for my planning and, and preparation assessment time in the afternoon, that that's not really a problem. Um, just little things like that. It's obviously, but but when those bigger things do come as as they may well do and probably will do then then i'm sure school will accommodate me really really well so so big thanks to them um and that's one of the things with ms the, the kind of you can't really predict what's going to happen i mean what i feel is all i can do is do everything i can within my control i'm amazed when i speak to a lot of people with ms who haven't changed their diet who haven't done this haven't done that and those are the things they can control and they're, they're almost just like resigning themselves to you know the will of the universe to to just take care of them or something i mean i'm much more of a right everything i can do in my control i'm going to do because i can and i want the best quality of life um for me and my family and so it, it, it's incumbent upon me to do so um yeah, so so that that's really where I'm at at the moment. Um, I don't even know what type of MS I have, right? Because I haven't had this full proper diagnosis. I haven't had a lumbar puncture. Then you know, all I know is that that I went right downhill, changed a bunch of things, have got better, but on a daily basis. Like I, so, I can't feel my fingers. I can't feel my stomach. I can't really feel my legs a lot. The the skin is 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 not very good sensation wise and my toes and feet um so i'm doing loads of exercise i bought like a core mat um a big medicine not medicine ball big gym ball and i'm doing all these different exercises and trying to in, in, improve the sensation on my feet and whatnot um as well as as i told you my diet and supplements and all that so you know that's that's where i'm at, at the moment we shall see whether I maintain a kind of status quo. I mean, that would be wonderful if I can spend the rest of my life like this, under control. But that's brilliant. But it's about, you know, understanding what the 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 triggers are, what the the variables are involved in bringing people on with MS, um, and trying to steer away from them. But uh, but I'm pretty upbeat about it. But that's probably because I feel fairly normal at the moment i know my limitations i know i'm cognitively not as sharp as i was definitely i used to write massive like articles on philosophy and now i write fairly big articles on philosophy <laughs> and so so you know but that that's that that's how it goes um uh i'm still probably too busy and I still probably need to cut back on things, but it's just really hard when you're used to that. Um, and just, you know, need to be careful. Just need to be careful and not overdo it. So so when you're used to overdoing it for so long and you get in that comfort zone of I can do this, then you bite off more and more and more. And and that's when you'll be hit, you know, where you'll be kneecapped by a, by a you know, a relapse and, and I don't want that to happen and so therefore I need to be conservative in my approach to to doing things and biting off more than I can chew um, so I, I've probably forgotten loads of stuff and I haven't told you all my symptoms uh, um, but but you, you get the general idea um, I would advocate the Overcoming MS book and program, that seems to be doing a really good job and it seems to be a decent evidence-based, science-based sort of approach to to combating um, multiple sclerosis. And although I can't be sure because I changed too many variables, I changed them all, it appears to have worked pretty well for me. Um, 
so hopefully this has been useful uh, let me know if you have any comments uh, or questions below by commenting um, and uh, yeah thanks for listening cheers bye bye